All right, welcome back, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I don't know that I say thank you enough, but thank you for following me on this incredible YouTube knife EDC collecting journey. All right, so today we want to talk about another Herman Knives from Polish Custom Knives. That's who came from. And Herman Knives, I've done several Herman Knife videos in the past. This is probably my favorite one that I have done. Let me just get that out of the way right now. I like a lot of things about them. They always come in these nice zipper padded pouches, which is cool. Um, but yet, they just use a Ziploc bag for your certificate of authenticity, some paperwork, um, a little Ziploc bag with spare ceramic bearings. So these are loose bearings, as you can see. So... I'm not taking this thing apart ever. I mean, it's not mine. It belongs to a friend of mine, Gary, who sent it to me. It came directly from Polish Custom Knives over in Poland. And they actually make the ceramic bearings themselves in-house. Herman makes them themselves, which is kind of crazy to me. But I like the fact that they're just using a regular Ziploc bag. So they're super professional and, you know, whatnot with their embroidered pouches, but yet still down to earth to just use a Ziploc bag. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Here is the certificate of authenticity. It gives you a few details about it. This is the Mantis version. Titanium and fat carbon, blah, blah, blah. Brand new made in uh, February third of 2024 because everywhere else in the United States they go day month year here in the United States we mix it up we go month day and year yeah I, I don't know what to tell you what it also comes with is the tool for the pivot which I think is super cool it is a custom pivot you're probably not going to have that tool laying around so they give you the tool for that. What might be cooler is if they provided you a bit so that you could put the bit in your bit driver, whatever flavor you have. I have this standard CRKT brass version for your quarter inch. And then I also use, thanks to my friend uh, Nick Shabazz, who recommended the iFixit tools, I use these a lot with the eighth inch drives. So what might be cool is if Herman, instead of giving you the full tool like this, just gave you the bit that you could then put in your particular driver. But enough about that. Let's get on to the knife. Beautiful fat carbon. Don't know what pattern they call that. Is that the 80s camo carbon or something like that? But very cool. Very nicely milled titanium scales. This is very standard on most Miller uh, Herman knives. The scales are going to look very similar. The pivots are always the same. And you're always going to have this sign of signature uh, tip of the screws, right? So instead of just end milling this and screwing into it, they drill all the way through. They thread the entire scale and then they just have the the nib of the hardware poking through. I, it's not my favorite part. I would prefer more of a hidden hardware or where it just, um, I'm trying to see what do I have here close by that would work. So on my Q36 SS from RJ Martin, you've got hardware that goes in, goes through the scale, through the backspacer into the lock side scale and then it just ends. It doesn't come out the other end. But the fact that they've kind of rounded off the hardware and finished it to a nice level is way better than just showing the butt end of the screw through the scale. And again, a little nitpick. I love the fact that they always kind of mill out 
under the pocket clip. It makes this thing work so well in your pocket, in any material pocket, whether it's a suit, whether it's thick jeans, whether it is um, like Carhartts or Dicky, like mechanics wear uh, clothes, it works great in the pocket because of that recess in the scale underneath the pocket clip. I love it. I think it looks great and it just functions fantastically, okay? Here's another little screw head you can see from the liner lock. This is a liner lock um, and it works fantastic. Blade shape, this is where this is my favorite. Oftentimes with the Herman knives, it's more of a kind of a upswept Persian style blade, which is really kind of one of my least favorite shapes or designs. So I really like this. A um, little bit of a harpoon-ish, if you want to call it that, on the upswing. But man, this, this is really a nice knife. Now these go for around seven, eight hundred dollars, give or take, like six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, depending on materials and whatnot. Uh, you know, so with shipping and tax and all of that stuff, eh, it gets up there. These are pricey, but handmade custom knives. I think that's totally a fair price. So does have the liner lock, which you can see here. Great access to it. There is a very nice cutout here for that. Super, super great access, super solid lockup. No lock stick, no nothing. It works really well. Now, is a liner lock your most strong lock? No. Especially when it's a thinner liner like this. This is an inset liner lock. Um, what I've been carrying recently is the Frank Fisher Battle. This is the King Battle, which is a, a also a liner lock, but a much thicker titanium liner lock. And it's not inset. And it runs the full length of the knife. So this is one liner behind the entire scale that locks up the knife. Arguably much stronger than just a little piece of steel or titanium inset into the scale held in with the one screw there. However, two totally different knives, two totally different functions. I've just been enamored with this one for quite a while now. I think it's day 70 something that I have carried the same knife. Don't mind the little scratch on my thumb there. Sorry about that. Um, I have a, a triathlon bike that I was pulled out of the garage to clean up, take some pictures and, and post for sale because I have another bike and I just am not doing triathlon. You don't care. All right, let's talk about the specs of this thing. So this is an unrelated knife injury. That, that's my point. It was a, a biking industry in, in injury from my garage. Anyway, four and seven eighths closed, eight and five eighths overall, 3.7 inch blade, 0 0.02 behind the edge, blade thickness of 0 0.127, M398. Don't be confused with M390. This is from my understanding, a far superior blade steel than just M390. I am not a, Neil, uh, uh, a steel nerd or a steel snob, so I'm not going to get into that. Weighs in at 4.8 ounces, 0.495 overall thickness, and runs on ceramic bearings, as I mentioned before. Now, one thing I do really like about this design is the backspacer. I love how it just kind of, it, it transitions down and, and isn't a harsh edge there. Now, granted, when you deploy this, your finger is way up here. It's nowhere near the backspacer. However, on this one, as I deploy this knife, my finger does, depending on how I fire it, is going to land right on the backspacer with that kind of a harsh edge. 
Now, the first place I saw that was on a Todd Rexford that I did recently. Um, the only Rexford that I have handled. And I was blown away. You should definitely check out that Rexford video. If you don't know anything about Todd Rexford, I, I will try to put a link to that video at the end of this one. It had a full length backspacer, if you will. And right here at the edge, it swooped down. So as you activated the flipper tab and deployed it, your finger was sliding because it tapered down. I love that. I, I wish all knives did that. Now that's something that as I work with makers and I'm going to have some made, some knives made maybe in the future that are true customs, I may ask, hey, instead of just cutting that off, can you angle it down a little bit so it just it's much more comfortable and smooth? I think that's a great way to do it. This would work really well if it was full length. It would do the same event, uh, same thing because it's very comfortable right here. If it's just straight across, you can catch your finger. And while it's not going to cut you, it can be less than comfortable, if you will. All right, so let's do a couple of quick size comparisons since we've been talking about the King Battle. Let's talk about that one. Four and a quarter inch blade. I did not give it the name King Battle. That was something the original owner and Frank Fisher came up with because it was the king of battles, was the biggest one at the time, was the most dramatic exotic materials, and they were not sure that one could be made that was more king-like than this one. I don't know if one was ever made that, that kind of rivals this one or not, but to me, and this is the epitome of knives for me. So... All right, there you go with the King Battle. The Sharpie, the Q36SS that I pulled out earlier. And just because I can, how about a custom Hellraiser since we're talking custom knives? I, Gary, Gary is the owner of this that lent it in, and I am super grateful for him. Uh, this, yeah, by far is my favorite Herman knife that I have ever handled or seen? Let me know your thoughts down below. I would love to hear your thoughts.